Hello everyone. My name is Devendra Kapadia. I'm the manager of Calculus and Algebra at Wolfram. Um, it's a great pleasure to welcome you to this Q&A with Calculus and Algebra developers, and that's me and my uh, very senior and respected colleague, Daniel Lickblau. And together we'll try and do a few things for you today. Um, in particular, we'd like to tell you a little bit of our side of the story uh, when we deal with users. And we'd like to listen to you, uh, hear your questions, uh, try and get some suggestions from you as what you'd like to see in our area. But just say straight away that calculus and algebra is uh, perhaps what has made Mathematica famous for uh, so long. And to this day, we continue to be the go-to place for a lot of people in the academic world and outside. So um, personally, I'm always very happy to work in this area because we keep on coming with good ideas in a surprisingly uh, surprising high rate. So I look after calculus, the whole team as well, and algebra, but particularly I'm more interested in differential equations and sums and asymptotes, et cetera. Danny is very versatile. He looks at uh, symbolic integration, et cetera. So together we, I think, can answer most questions that you might want to ask about calculus and algebra uh, today. Now, uh, I'll begin by giving you a brief glimpse of something that everyone's looking forward to, and that's uh, the next uh, release of Mathematica, uh, which, believe it or not, is called 13.2. We had 13.1 a few months ago, and now we've got 13.2. And I picked uh, three features in that release, which are not necessarily the most, uh, you know, kind of dramatic from the point of view of the whole release, but uh, they were driven by users like you telling us some time ago what they would like to see in the language. Uh, so I'm going to talk about fractional calculus, differential equations, and then asymptotics. Okay, so. On the fractional calculus side, uh, this has been the most requested feature for a long, long time. And so in version 13.1, we introduced uh, fractional D, which computes the symbolic riemann liouville fractional derivative. That's a mix of, uh, you know, uh, derivatives and integrals. So if you do fractional D of sine X, you don't exactly get cosine X, you get uh, with, let's say, order one half, then, uh, you see over here, you get that, get back this uh, very complex answer over here. And then um, if you can do a numerical evaluation to get the numerical answer, uh, people have asked us for something called the grunwald lentikov derivative. And that's what motivated uh, this new feature called N fractional D, the numerical fractional derivative solver in version 13.2. So in 13.2, we have got N fractional D, which will give you the numerical answer straight away, as long as you tell it what to compute. So uh, fractional calculus has been developed very nicely over the last one year or so at the company. And uh, I think one point to note is that, yes, it is powerful. It's beautiful. Um, it's the, where the future lies. But it seems to me that from the point of view of the average user, they continue to use things like uh, desolve and integrate quite heavily. So I'll talk a little bit about you know, uh, differential equations and my favorite function for a long time, I was Mr. D solver at the company, didn't do much else. So um, in the year 2004, when I just begun uh, as a developer, I wrote a long tutorial on symbolic OD solving. It took me about four months. I didn't do uh, anything else for four months. I just wrote the tutorial out and uh, it's available to you in 13.1 for sure. Uh, that's a tutorial. But what had happened is that over the last um, 15, 20 years, uh, this tutorial had become a little bit dated. So um, things had moved on in the system. They had improved. We had added partial differential equations, lots of other things. So there was a need for an update of the whole tutorial. And uh, that's why my, my colleague, Aram Manasalian, came in and did a thorough update, making sure everything worked the way it should in the latest release. So version 13.2 has a fully updated tutorial for DSOL available in it. Um, it's checked carefully. But my main point is that uh, when people ask questions on Stack Exchange, et cetera, what I notice that often the questions are not about some deep and powerful algorithm. It's about how do I get started with DSOL? And I kind of, I, I feel sometimes what they get back from those 
groups is not exactly what you might be looking for because um, I guess the, they are more geared to advanced use in a way. So uh, this over here is a guide in that tutorial called Working DSOL Users Guide, which I wrote at that time. And uh, it's a very thorough kind of introduction to DSOL for anyone who wants to learn it. And it talks about setting up the problem and you know plotting the solution, etc. It is very, very kind of you know uh, wonderful. I think it took a long time to write this plotting the solution, all kinds of very elementary things, and uh, some new stuff about uh, singular solutions, etc. And it even has a discussion of, is your problem well posed? So when you ask a question to the computer, you must ask the question, is my problem well posed? It answers all that for you. So I do hope that you'll pass around the message to anyone you know, that if they want to learn how to use DSolve, they should look at the symbolic differential equation solving tutorial in DSOL, fully updated in version 13.2. And one last thing that, so I said fractional calculus was driven by, I would say some advanced users, uh, differential equations, everyone uses. Um, and then finally, there's one area which actually was driven internally. Uh, we wanted to do a bit more on the asymptotic side, the approximation side, which is halfway between symbolic calculus and numerical calculus. Uh, symbolics is great, but somewhat limited. Numerics is powerful, but a bit unreliable for many problems. Asymptotics bridges the gap between symbolics and numerics. And uh, to my surprise, uh, people seem to really like what we have in asymptotics. In fact, we had a conference in October, and I thought people would talk to me about almost everything except asymptotics, but they spoke to me about nothing but asymptotics. So everyone loves asymptotics. I don't know why, but it seems to be a very popular area. So in version 13.2, we got a small update over here for asymptotics. Uh, namely, if you give it a function like 1 over 1 minus x, but you say, give me the infinite odd asymptotic, it'll give you back the full power series expansion for that function. And you can go a step further and say, I would also like the conditions of convergence and you get back those as well. Uh, to be honest with you, it's just a mix of two things under the hood, a series coefficient to compute the nth coefficient, and then some convergence to determine convergence. But I think uh, this adds one more layer to this very popular area of the language, namely asymptotics. So uh, that's a brief glimpse of what's coming up in the next release in the next few weeks. I don't know exactly when. Uh, we're just working on the very final aspects. But uh, my hope is that today we'll go back with lots of nice suggestions from you as to what's worth doing from our point of view in the next year or two. But before asking you to uh, open up with your question, you can of course type them in at any point and inform us what you would like us to discuss. Uh, I think it's a good time for me to uh, hand over to my colleague, Daniel Lickblau, who actually loves doing lots of things. But if there's one area where he's really put in a lot of effort for the last 20 years, I would say, uh, it's symbolic integration. So welcome, Daniel, and uh, please go ahead and tell us a little bit about things from your point of view. Thank you, Devendra. Um, I first, I'd like to say, I like the idea, um, th this, this asymptotic development, because often, um, when looking at uh, problems that might involve recurrences, I don't care so much about the exact solution, but I want to know the asymptotic growth. This comes up often in algorithm analysis um, among many areas. And, and I think it's just great that that uh, you and others have, have worked mm -hmm. on this, Adam and, and, and yourself and others. Um, I, th I think it's been a great development. Um, I wanted to say a little bit about relatively new things in um, integration, symbolic integration. Um, none of these, I think, are brand spanking new, but they're all in the last one to three or four years. Um, so I will uh, share screen uh, for a bit and um, and and just uh, go with three examples, and then I'll say a little bit more about the ongoing development. So. First and foremost, we added handling uh, for um, algebraics that has improved considerably. Um, here's an example uh, where, where we're getting these elliptics involving arc, sign, arc cinches or an arc cinch. 
and just a, an ugly result uh, for for something that actually has a, an elementary um, antiderivative. And I, I won't. I mean, the, the practice of getting elementary antiderivatives for all uh, possible integrams is quite fraught. Uh, there, there's been um, books and reams of articles um, written about this, and and. Uh, I don't pretend that we do a complete job of it, but we do a much better job than we did uh, even um, in version 12. Um, and, and, and this has been a very nice improvement uh, for us. Um, again, there are many reasons you might want the simpler antiderivatives. One is the branch cut structure tends to be nicer and better understood. Um, numeric evaluation tends to be stabler. Uh, easier to get definite integrals when you have simpler antiderivatives, et cetera, et cetera. Um, we also added a lot more table-driven support in the last few years. Um, and here's an example, or actually a couple of three examples of um, things that we simply couldn't integrate in past and, and now do. Um, some are in terms of elementary functions. Uh, this one result is not, but nonetheless, is a uh, you know, big step uh, beyond what we could do in past. Um, a third area where we added, actually, this was um, uh, Devendra's um, Mr. actually Dr. Desalve's work, was improving on uh, some of our contour integration code uh, in the case where we have a definite integral that's parametrized. Um, so here's an example of what we do now and what we used to do. Well, that's just a mess. I mean, yeah, we get a conditional result of zero under all these horrendous conditions. And uh, do we actually ever get negative two pi x? Um, I don't know. I can't see it in here. Um, th this is not the sort of result you'd want to work with. OK, and um, my last example uh, is a another parametrized uh, integral handled by a contour method. Uh, where we it used to just give zero, flat out zero. And here we have conditional results that are actually correct based on the um, parameter ranges. So I wanted to show these just as examples of ongoing development. Uh, I will say there's been a lot of um, work on the more mundane uh, area of, well, fixing bugs. And in particular, after a recent sweep through the indefinite integration bugs, I think the um, size of that list is now lower than it's been since, uh, probably since I started here, which was just over 31 years ago. Uh, so I'm very happy about that. I can't say the same for all of our calculus, but uh, we we have been making progress and, and um, we're, we're you know, doing a, a lot to get things right. I mentioned some of this as a segue into questions raised on um, uh, on, on on YouTube. Uh, I, I, on, I'm sorry, on on the um, the the, the uh, external chat links. Uh, Devendra, okay with you if I tackle one or two by uh, Ali Hashemi? Certainly, go ahead and do it. Yes, please. Okay, so uh, Ali has asked. Um, well, how do you make sure symbolic results are correct? Um, and in particular, do you compare against standard problems? Yes, we do. Um, but we we do a lot more. Uh, nowadays, uh, we, we have this huge uh, regression test suite, and we add to it, uh, in particular, with, with fixed bugs um, as, as we go. And uh, what I used to do with Integrate 20-odd uh, years ago was fix things and put the fixes in and hope for the best and and think, well, certainly I can't be breaking anything with this fix, right? And that's invariably not right. So, uh, and, and I would find out sometimes two, three years later, uh, oh, your fix here broke this. So what we do now is a, a what I do in particular is much more disciplined. Uh, I almost never, put in changes uh, to integrate or other calculus code without having them tested carefully first. We have people in uh, quality assurance who are extremely good 
at not just running tests, but analyzing results, weeding out noisy failures, things that failed because a form changed, but but uh, gives a an equivalent result, for example. And um, in 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 the process, I, I think I've found that I'm now revisiting far fewer change sets than I used to. And we're getting things, you know, to working. Um, so so uh, we to, to summarize, we compare not just against uh, benchmark examples, but against a um, huge regression suite. Um, there's another question from Ali. Uh, what is the ratio uh, where we give correct um, results when compared against textbook or or other reference problem uh, data sets? The short answer, I don't know. Uh, but I think you have to also separate out a third category, which is where we don't give a result. And um, the when 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 you remove uh, those from consideration, I, I think the ratio of of correct actual results to wrong results is quite high. Uh, we we file bug reports for things that we get wrong, and and we. You know, over time, we we uh, work on improvements to 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 address these things. Uh, we haven't been able to fix everything. Symbolic calculus is extremely difficult, uh, particularly in the area of definite integration, where I've probably run across more problems than anybody else anywhere, and um, maybe a few I invented problems to run across. Uh, but you know you have difficulties trying to find parameterized branch cuts of uh, elliptic functions. Forget about it. So yeah, there there are hard areas, and there's there's areas where uh, there there are methods where um, we have not yet unraveled. I think all that we can in terms of what what goes wrong, uh, particularly with uh, Mellon Barnes convolution uh, integrals, in particular involving parameters. Once again. So we're these are things that we constantly uh, uh, worry about and and over time try to improve on. Uh, I'll I'll yeah. stop there and give it back to Devendra. Maybe you want to add a bit. Yes. So I should say that uh, on the pure textbook side, so to speak, uh, we have a quite a good hold on what's happening. So there's this famous book by Stewart on calculus, uh, which has I would think six thousand problems in it. And I had a team of three or four interns who actually worked through that book and checked every single answer in mathematical, graphically, numerically, et cetera. Uh, what we could not do at that point is now being tackled, not for this release, but for the very next release. So uh, my answer to the question is, that's one level uh, in addition to what Danny's, then there's another level, let's say Gratia and Rizik. Uh, I had an intern who actually tested, uh, I would say about 5,000 integrals from there and found that we could not do five of them or something of that sort. And she actually checked every single one and used graph theoretical methods to analyze the whole set. My belief is that we have a large benchmark, which is not the QA benchmark, uh, which is, I think about many millions, uh, something 16 million right now, we can't run it every day, but we have internally 16 million examples, which we in some sense try to check. So. Ali Hashmi, my answer to the question is, I could not possibly check 16 million of them, but we do take samples of, let's say, um, 50,000 from them and check them routinely. I typically do check around 80,000 examples before every release myself with help from my colleagues and uh, one person in the team who's dedicated to benchmarking. So we do what we can. Uh, to be honest, it hurts us when we see um, bugs coming in after all the effort. I know Danny is probably the best in our team at that kind of of thing now he looks at things in a flash and um, naturally he also if you like takes the blame when things go wrong but, but there's much more that happens in his case and I, I think he's the I think the, the stalwart in the team when it comes to fixing bugs answering questions tax change going and giving an honest but useful answer so calculus is not an easy game but that's what makes it so popular Okay, so I think I've said enough, but um, I'll be happy to give more details. I mean, I see another question coming from Richard yeah. Asser. Well, I want to let me interrupt for a second, Devendra. I, I just want to uh, make one addition because the, the title is QA with calculus involving calculus and algebra. Yes. I will say that in terms of algebra, polynomial algebra, rational functions, uh, et cetera, 
uh, we we get things right. Uh, it's uh, when you get things wrong, it becomes obvious pretty quickly. Yes, I won't say there's no bugs in that area, but basically we get things right. And and so yeah, we're we're comparing, we're testing on a I guess daily basis. Uh, when we make changes, we do so carefully. Uh, usually it's to add uh, faster algorithms, that sort of thing. Adam Strabonsky has done a lot in that area recently. Devendra might want to say a bit about. Um, but but th there, there's far less of an issue there than with, uh, say, symbolic calculus. Yes. Oh. I, yeah, I totally agree. Uh, so I'll, we, say, we said calculus and algebra, but algebra is not exactly problematic, but there are two reasons for it. One, it's kind of easier but it's also thanks to, again, uh, Danny and Adam Strasbonsky. Uh, Adam is also an expert bug fixer. He gets things fixed the same night. Um, and just to give you the workflow, um, he works only by night. I work only by day. Uh, we have a small intersection period between 9.30 and 11 at night where he'll send me a pull request for his latest bug fix. I'll quickly review because he doesn't make mistakes, so I know I can just let it go more or less and next morning the bug is fixed. So algebra tends to be a very stable area for us, both because it's in some sense less ambiguous, but also because of these two experts, Danny and Adam, who keep things under control over there, and who actually understand what's going on more important. Okay, um, so I think maybe we can go on to another question from Richard, asked about integral differential equations. My answer is yes, we do. Uh, for integral differential equations, the category that we support is roughly the Volterra category. The Fredholm category is a bit harder. And uh, uh, okay, so fractional or differential equations, we are kind of starting out. And Richard, we are looking forward to people like you sending us concrete things which you'd like to see working. Uh, we have mostly been working on the symbolic side with DSOL. We'd like to go into NDSOL. But to motivate that internally, I would need examples from external people saying, you know, this is what we need to see happening in the next few releases. So um, I think. I'll just take that question completely myself because I, that's one area which I do know a lot about in, in sense that you know, I work with the developers, but honestly, we are looking at references, looking at um, the IEEE journals, et cetera, to see what's worth uh, doing in terms of applications of fractional or differential equations. And if non newtonian fluids interest you, Richard, we certainly look at them in the near future. But again, uh, some, concrete examples from you sent to tech support would definitely help us a lot. I hope that's okay with you. I, I want to add and in, interject, sorry, in terms of integral differential equations, I do see that come up with some frequency on Stack Exchange, including uh, very recently. And um, I, I, I think that our best hope there, I could be wrong, but I think our best hope there is for numeric development. Yes. And um, if if there's impetus for doing symbolic development, you know, through examples and and known technology, it would also be good to point us to to references for that. But uh, ab absent that, uh, I think almost maybe every problem I've encountered uh, on the forums has involved uh, numerics and numeric approaches, and um, I. I don't think we've done huge development in that area yet, but I'm not the expert to ask. Yes, I agree. And I think uh, we really need to get going on the numerical side over there. But again, it's a question of motivating the team, the developers, and uh, I mean, the R&D people that are top in to do it. And again, because we don't quite see a, a strong demand over there, but like Danny, I'm convinced that it's the numerical side of things which needs to take off. And I'll certainly pass it along to that team. So we said calculus and algebra, but that unfortunately right now doesn't include numerical calculus. I mean, calculus is much more than symbolic calculus. So uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Richard, I think we could, I wish I could give you a, a much more positive answer. I think what we have is well tested, but we are not uh, quite there yet. Uh, I think we can go and take a question from John Snyder. Uh, Danny, do you want to respond to John's question about uh, deficit integrals such as Watson's? Uh, do you know that we might have something that we could talk about in that area? I do not know. Um, I, I, I don't know these uh, integrals by name. Uh, maybe I should, but I don't. Um, I, I do not know uh, whether we have capabilities of doing them. I guess the only way would be to try an example. Um, 
whether we will have such capabilities going forward, um, hard to say. We, we've added a lot in the area of indefinite integration and, and I think continue to do so. But for definite integrals, uh, Devendra, probably you know more than I do about what the future you know, roadmap is. Uh, I, I thought for years that maybe going more towards table-driven methods would be helpful, but but I don't know if that's actually realistic or you know, whether that would get a large percentage of the types of integrals people really want to to uh, compute or or whether it would just you know give a very small fraction so i don't i don't have a good uh, yeah i think uh, that we're, right we're getting into methods of multiple integrals basically trying to reduce them into single integrals for example cases where you know you can make a nice substitution to get that i mean in a way the chain variables functionality has helped over there but john if it means tackling a particular that's not doable now. Very likely this required data development, or as Danny says, sometimes just table lookup. And we are working towards that as well. Um, I certainly have it in one day. Uh, we'll have all of Grash and Digic available uh, in the system, not just via algorithm, but also via special case uh, table lookup. Because sometimes people, that's good enough for people, you know. Um, it, it's not the best, but so, John, I think, um, I mean, we, we do, of course, communicate. So if, if you would like to send along the examples, I'll be happy to look at them um, and we try and do them in the next couple of releases, okay? So we can go on maybe a little bit to take up other questions. A uh, question about CUDA speed, which I think um, neither me or Danny is exactly in that area, but I should say straight away that right now I'm trying to get into GPU stuff because I think it's relevant to some of our areas. I won't give more details for obvious reasons because we don't know what we're going to do, but oh, Arblib is already part of what we do. Uh, we already have Arblib taken care of, uh, if that, if you mean the library, because that's what we use for the interval computation uh, in version 13.1, I should think. So yes, we have uh, taken care of Arblib and we continue to mine these libraries bit by bit. Uh, Arblib is fantastic because it's values outside, reliable, and unlike symbolic computation, numeric computation, uh, if it survives, is usually of very good quality. So. CUDA, I think I won't say much more, but it's being developed. We are slowly getting back to it, partly because many, uh, most laptops today, I would think, would have a GPU on them. But my own interest at the moment is to learn uh, CUDA programming, GPU programming, parallel programming, with a view to putting them into symbolic computation. But it's going to take a bit of time because that's not exactly what I'm built for, so to speak. You know, A, a lot so, of symbolic um, calculation doesn't parallelize. So yes. it's not clear that that having such capabilities would would help for that particular purpose. Yes, um, obviously that it's quite helpful for sure. for other things. I think so. So Richard, coming back to a question about you've asked more about uh, the fractional order ODs. Uh, I think I I know that a little bit in detail the, about the memory effect of fractional ODs. In fact, that's that's what attracts me to them that they've got a kind of non locality. And I believe that's why they are so important. And that's why you don't typically talk of initial conditions for them because they are built into the whole problem. So, you know, when you do a differential equation, uh, you need to worry about initial conditions, boundary conditions. When you do a fractional differential equation, it's all built in. So the system just evolves on its own. Um, going back to the back stroke on problem, et cetera. But you might want to look at an excellent tutorial on fractional calculus. Oh, I am talking far ahead now. Uh, it's in version 13.2. So when version 13.2 comes, you will be able to learn fractional calculus in great detail from Mathematica itself. Um, we have done all the research in about uh, what you're talking about. We have the references uh, and we are in takeoff mode over there. But I hope that uh, you would take a look at that tutorial when it becomes available to you, probably in a week's time or so. But uh, I agree with this is an interesting area. I noticed that the IEEE, I said early on as well, uh, they had a whole um, half an issue dedicated to uh, fractional differential equations in um, standard electrical circuits. That's the area which I'm interested in right now. So we are trying to follow up over there. But any examples from you for sure would be very, very uh, useful for us. So thank you very much for all that interest. That's great. Okay. So yeah. Uh, I believe some people are having some 
video audio issues. I, I don't know. I don't see it myself, but I'm sorry if you're facing that uh, right now. So uh, good. So uh, I think we have tried to answer the questions that have come in so far. Uh, if there are any more, please do keep them coming. We are still here with you for some more time, or else we might just delve a little deeper into one ones that already come so far. So. Have, um, I guess this is a question for uh, meeting hosts, but has uh, the uh, Wolfram community thread been checked to see if any questions were posted there? Yeah, so. And I do wish to uh, say that uh, while that's happening, that a fractional differential equation is something that we really understand uh, very well. And since the question has come up, uh, I might as well try and show you a little bit about that over here. Uh, and I'm going to actually open up my copy of 13.2 in just a minute and even show you the tutorial that because there's so much interest in fractional differential equations. So let me just take a minute and I'm going to share and show that to you. So I'm going to share for just a few minutes more and here's a full tutorial on fractional calculus for anyone who wants to learn it in the new release. Uh, this has been written by the team that actually developed this stuff and uh, we didn't know what to call them. So some people said differ integral, some people said whatever, but we've tried to drive a balance in language, etc. But this is the place for you to learn about our own approach to the topic and uh, it's got everything in it. It's got the numerical fractional differentiation. That's the numerical fractional differentiation over here. Laplace transforms, very important. We put a lot of effort into, you know, all this. So, uh, and there's lots of references over here. So if you send us some more examples, the least we'll do is we'll add them to the references over here. This is what we use ourselves for the project, okay? So uh, I hope that you will really find this new release uh, even better for fractional calculus and hope that people actually start learning this beautiful subject. Uh, unlike, uh, you know, in the 1980s, there was this thing called chaos, uh, which everyone seemed to love, but I think that it lacked a substantial theory behind it. And it somewhat didn't fit into the classical calculus. There were bits of it, which were really wonderful, like the CAM theory, but for the most part, I thought that uh, chaos theory would kind of not survive. It survived, but not that interesting anymore. The fractional calculus is different and I think it will survive for a very long time to come. Okay, I do see some more questions coming in over here. Uh, so Ali asked a question, thanks. Any plans about combining calculus and extensions for computational geometry, especially? Ah, uh, Danny might want to say something, but so Ali, there's a book by Alfred Gray on, uh, the differential geometry of curves and surfaces goes back to the 1990s. Um, it's an excellent book. It's about 700 pages long. And every year I look at it and say, we should really do this for Mathematica. Uh, the difficulty is that what anyone means by geometry is hard to say. Uh, to me, geometry on its own unqualified is uh, Euclidean geometry. And then beyond that, there's algebraic geometry, differential geometry, combinatorial geometry. Uh, in Mathematica, when people say geometry, they, these days they mean computational geometry. So my answer is, as far as extensions of computational geometry are concerned, they've already happened in some sense. Danny can, knows very well. We have region integration, which is a very big step over there. Uh, we are trying to go a little bit deeper into region support and differential equations so you can uh, you can do a solid differential equation over region, but that's kind of a little bit on the hard side uh, because the number of regions you can tackle symbolically is not so wide. Of course, on the finite element side, that's taken care of brilliantly by uh, Oliver Rubin Kornick's work. So I think that there's much better hope of continuing work on computational geometry and calculus com combination. Uh, differential geometry will be a new project but I think it's a project that we very much would like to do. Um, I also know the people who, at least one of the authors who kind of rewrote Alfred Gray's book, 
uh, Simon Salomon. But Ali, if you really want to do differential geometry in Mathematica, that book is your best bet. It's got attached notebook, etc. It, it's a bit outdated. Let's only worry about. So the book is a book by Alfred Gray on differential geometry. Okay, so maybe Danny, you want to add something about the calculus side and computational I, geometry? I, I want to say, well, a couple of things. One, um, a lot of the functionality in Alfred Gray's book now exists in the Wolfram Function Repository. Things that can be written as functions are, are there. Um, at least many are. Uh, so, so there's some amount of support for curves and surfaces, uh, which is the, the main focus of, of that book. Um, more generally, I, I think a uh, large and growing area in computational mathematics related to computational geometry is discrete differential geometry, where I do not think we have, uh, at this point, um, large support. Uh, I, I've seen bits and pieces show up on, on forums and, and elsewhere. Uh, I don't know if we'll go in that direction. I, I think it would be nice because the, there's uh, very nice applications uh, to graphics and the medical industry and um, any things that involve materials uh, and, and shapes and, and, and the like. Uh, just a host of applications. I have a feeling that uh, this will also, if, if we had there be, be more pioneered by uh, numerics, um, development than than symbolic but I don't know that for sure and uh it, it it's um it, it it's a new area uh, in terms of of uh you know for us to attack related to this would be um uh, uh, computational topology uh which, which which has become uh ever more popular for similar reasons to to discrete differential geometry uh mostly this um is has been applied in two and three dimensions and another area where we've uh, maybe seen a, a start in terms of uh, well well from function repository functions uh, but but there's probably a lot more that that could be done uh, and i i don't uh, know if or when we will uh, branch into those areas i'm not sure if those are exactly what uh, ali what you had in mind but but those are um maybe uh, uh offshoots from your question Yes, uh, I do see some hope. Thanks, Danny. Uh, I do see some hope in the younger generation, which I don't think includes myself anymore. Uh, so recently I had um, the chance to meet a very large group of uh, math and statistics PhD students at a, a conference. It's actually, it's like a, more like a meetup uh, with an NSF kind of thing. And uh, what struck me is how past two things. One is how knowledgeable they are about either like differential geometry, topology, discrete geometry, all that we're talking about right now. And secondly, how passionate they are about Mathematica, which surprised me because you'd think that these days Mathematica is not hot, if you like, but it looks like people still know how powerful it is. And my hope is that over the next one or two years, uh, we'll have these people coming in, working on projects that they like uh, in computational topology um, and you know different geometry. And they really did say they want to work on these uh, discrete remaining geometry. So they lined up. I was surprised that I, I thought when I went into that meetup that I'd meet two people who might be interested in Mathematica. It was more like 25 and they all have been in touch with me. Um, I'm, and I'm almost touched with the way how nice they were too to us that day. So I think the hope is that we'll have a new generation of development taking place to absorb all these classical mathematics areas into the Wolfram language with the help of a new generation of developers. Uh, I'll come back to John in just a minute, uh, but there's a question from Parker about a formalization bridging discrete continuous calculus. Uh, well, we have both discrete and continuous calculus in Mathematica. When people say calculus, they mean continuous calculus. We have a huge amount of discrete calculus. Uh, there are some bridges provided by things like difference quotient. There's a difference quotient function in Mathematica, which bridges the gap between discrete and continuous uh, in the sense that the limit of a difference quotient is the derivative. Uh, we are trying to build a bridge from different equations, differential equations. And right now I have a high school intern, a very bright high school intern who's worked with me, uh, making a full course on discrete calculus from his young viewpoint. And uh, he's a computer science kind of person. So my hope is that someone like him can give us 
more insight into what how we can bridge uh, discrete continuous. So yes, that we are working on that right now. Uh, but that's a great question, Parker. Discrete calculus something we've worked on off and on, but not seriously since 2008. And we'll probably get back to it next year. So the plan is at that point, we will build these bridges, get better documentation. And uh, you're not a mathematician, you say Parker, but this is actually a very hard area going from discrete continuous is very hard. And um, I would think that computer scientists would want to use discrete calculus, much more continuous calculus, but somehow that's not worked out. I don't see computer science the departments offering discrete calculus. You'd think they'd want to do discrete calculus, but I don't see it happening. Uh, there's discrete mathematics, but discrete calculus seems to be something that's languishing and needs more attention. That's just one, my one thing I'll add. Um, at, at the more theoretical end, uh, there, there does seem to be some uh, amount of literature um, that attempts to explain discrete differential geometry uh, and, and I believe to bridge to some extent to um, the more mathematical, um, the, the more classical field of, of differential geometry. I think there's a book by a professor named Keenan Crane, who is based, I believe, at Carnegie Mellon, not sure about that. Um, that, that might be worth looking into. But regardless, if you do a web search um, to, to try to uh, find literature that that um, explains uh, discrete differential geometry, uh, you, you'll probably come up with a, a large number of hits. And I would hope that at least a modest percentage would even be readable. I mean, many, you have to be an expert in the field to understand for many pieces of the literature, but but there's there are some elementary uh, expositions out there. Right, and I think uh, we don't have anything very new in mathematics on this side on different geometry, but the one book which I know about, like the book by Gray is excellent. And uh, so Ali, we have noted, I've not made a note of your suggestion for differential and discrete different geometry uh, for mathematics in the near future. Uh, John Snyder made a comment about uh, some developers using internal developer code that will automatically check. Uh, if we just mean things like simplify, full simplify, uh, I, beyond that, I don't recall anyone um, on the symbolic side doing it. Maybe you could, if you don't mind, John, just let me know, uh, let us know which particular talk you're referring to, which where this was mentioned. I mean, I don't, we do have some tools internally, by the way. So, uh, yeah, so. And meanwhile, I'll just take up a question from Chase Turner. Is there a known pattern function repository? I, I think this goes to Danny for sure. Daniel, Daniel is I, I don't know offhand what circular statistics is. Um, is there a packlet? I don't know. Um, if In the function repository, I have some idea of what's there, but the term circular statistics um, or directional, okay. I'm not, I'm, I'm not familiar with that term and the best thing I could say would be check uh, the search uh, on the on on the function repository for the key term directional statistics and see if anything shows up. But I'm I, I we we have like two thousand eight hundred functions in there. I obviously don't remember too much of it. Uh, but but um, it it if it's there, maybe something will show up that way. I, I simply don't recall. Um, there was, oh, one thing I wanted to say uh, to uh, Ali, um, you are welcome to post on, uh, I know you're active on Wolfram Community, if you have particular problems that have discrete differential geometry methodologies, um, it might make sense to post there if you're concerned that your post will be too vague or outside the scope of, of the forum, A, make it as specific as you can, point to um, uh, specific uh, literature on the topic, and 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 B um, mentioned that that this was suggested in a uh, live stream um, Q and A, and and um, that probably will be enough to make the moderators happy. Uh, and if, I'm, I'm a half moderator. I I don't actually ever, you know, I I make recommendations to the team, but I don't actually do any moderation. But if I catch such a post, I'll I'll let them know um, that it was something we solicited. That I think that's usually the starting point for 
internally justifying development for any area that it came from uh, an expert external source, which I think Ali you qualify for. So um, I think that that's a good starting point. But believe me, even in the last one week, um, Michael Trott, who's, you know, um, uh, we, everyone knows Michael Trott is our community. Um, he just told us yesterday that, uh, again, Gray's book on differential geometry is now the most highly cited book on Mathematica at 1400 cit citations. So I think that it's an area that's waiting for us to adopt because when things go in the system, they tend to get better in quality rather than having them lying all over the place in books and all that. Of course, books are great, but I think Mathematica itself has got the best documentation right now. Okay, so I think uh, there's a, a comment that I want to, to make over here is that generally speaking, uh, going back to John's question about verification, we are, and also to Ali's question early on, we are doing our best now to internally check things before returning them. And there's one extreme case, in fact, in version 13.2, where we didn't quite know the answer from a certain asymptotic method might be correct. We just check it internally before returning it. So as we go on, we are trying to take the burden off the user to check things. And I know the solve function had something called verify solutions goes to true for a long time. We like that to have it in every single calculus function. Uh, so if you tell us that by default, we'll check it for you before return it. So if it's an indifferent integral, we'll try and check internally that you know the derivative was z uh, was you know the original function. So we are working towards that. It's expensive to check, but I think it's worth that uh, slight effort. So Danny, maybe if you have something. Yeah, we we are not doing that at this time. I just right, want right. to emphasize. Oh, absolutely, that, yeah. You know. Yeah, we certainly do it inside DSOL a little bit. Okay, we, we we try and make sure there's a kind of sanity check to make sure that we don't give yeah. completely wrong answers. But uh, going forward, I think that might be things because many of you just don't know that you know we might be wrong. They come in thinking that we are kind of you know gods, of it, but we know that things can be wrong in uh, any software. And um, so we'd like to. I'm pretty thinking of you of young students who might you know use us and rely on us to give an answer and then things don't uh, work out in the end for them. So uh, I think, uh, right. So that's a good point, uh, point about type lambda calculus being a place where CS intersects. I think that's right. It's kind of an area where I think the best person to answer would be Stephen from himself, but maybe Danny has something to comment on uh, lambda calculus. Only that lambda calculus is to calculus as ham is to hamster or something like that. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's its own world. Uh, it, it it very much intersects computer science, uh, semantics of computer languages. Um, it intersects mathematics. I I think I've seen um, category theory involved in in uh, typing of uh, in 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 computer languages, for example. Uh, but this this is uh, this is an area that seems to be under some development in the uh, Wolfram Physics Project world, I think. Uh, but but it's not. Um, and 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 also actually, uh, in a, at a more practical level, it's uh, something that gets considered by our uh, new compiler team, the 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 people uh, working on the function compile function and and all its relatives because uh type typing and type inferencing is is uh, extremely important to them and and um Tom Wickham Jones who who leads that is uh also uh quite knowledgeable about lambda calculus uh but but this is um and, and as far as calculus and algebra development goes this is a whole different thing right but i think we are definitely trying to come to you know trying to make our area calculus algebra intersect with other things like discrete mathematics is one area which I'm very interested in the moment um, discrete calculus trying to see where we can find some kind of common language to talk to the computer science folks uh, and on the other hand try and talk to the engineers so we are doing what we can over there uh, we, we have a core team that continues to produce features for every release which we need to do anyway. And there are a few people who are allowed to work on more speculative projects. And uh, that's the kind of thing I'm talking about, discrete mathematics or discrete calculus or whatever. And those, of course, become core projects after some more investigation. Uh, I think we would, should probably go on to one more question from Kurt, about, very nice question about conformal maps. So uh, Kurt, I, 
Okay, I'm thinking a little ahead now, but uh, I do have some work done on contour integration, which you know, as I I think uh, is you saw that in the in in Danny's examples. So I was asking myself um, last week, in fact, that how far are we from being complete on the complex analysis side? And you're right, it's conformal maps. But then I don't know what would it mean to say we support conformal maps. Does that mean uh, the Riemann mapping theorem? Does it mean Riemann surfaces? What what does it mean concretely? Does it mean birational transformations? But from what you're saying, when you say uh, conformal maps, you mean a particular kind of short key Klein prime functions. I think that's the kind of thing we can do. Uh, again, if as part of a bigger project. Uh, we are trying to get away from very special function development with like one function at a time. But I think conformal maps looks like it's one more area that's ready for, for you know, things, you know, to come live. But again, if you are, if you happen to be an expert in that, which does look like in some sense, uh, do send us examples, mention that you talked about it to us at the Q&A over here, and we look in that. But I totally agree when I look at a book by Alphers or a book look by, you know, by Churchill and Brown, all the famous books in that area, the current textbooks. I think the last chapters on conformal maps uh, are the one place where we have holes. You say holes in the plane, but we have holes in our functionality also. So I think complex analysis underlies a lot of um, definite integral evaluation, the, the Mellon method, the Meiji method, uh, the pure contour integration method, the, the, the Bromwich contour integral method in Laplace Trans. So we have a lot of complex analysis under the hood, but somehow we have shied away from talking about complex analysis itself. And I think we should do it. Danny, is there anything from your side that you want to add? Oh, that? Two things. One, um, if you have implemented functions along this line, by all means, contribute to the Wolfram Function Repository. And uh, two, um, this, to some extent, uh, not not in the way you, the, the question itself is worded, but um, more generally, when working with conformal maps, um, I think, again, this might fall into the numerics realm first. Uh, because there's simply more that I think can be done numerically than than symbolically. I uh, I know many many years ago uh, a professor at Columbia named Gautam Dasgupta worked in this area uh, with Mathematica. I actually uh, got to see a, a talk by a grad student of his um, in 2003, uh, way back. Um, and, and it looked quite interesting what they were doing. I don't know if he is still active. Uh, he may have retired. Um, I, I'm certain he has retired. Uh, I don't know if he still works on this or if others have picked it up. But um, it looked like a promising way to get um, developed numerically contour um, um, uh, conformal rather maps that that um, that had useful properties. And and so yeah, it's an area where where we're lacking. But and, and I'm not convinced that it's something we'll be able to develop too far symbolically. Uh, although, as Devendra says, there's there's gaps, and and we we could do more. Yeah, I think a good source for that kind of thing is uh, they're not so well uh, known nowadays. But uh, a set of books by Michael Trott, uh, the Mathematics Guidebook for Symbolics. I think if there's any one person in the company who knows about conformal maps and constant, it is he. And I think his book might be a good place to look at if you can lay your hands on a copy and uh, do it because um, I think he, he's got that deep geometrical insight. So I think what distinguishes conformal geometry from anything else is that geometrical insight counts as much as analytical skill. And I think I think of myself as being a geometrist, but I think I'm really an analyst at heart. I think I don't. So I'm, I'm just saying that we kind of also need people who can think in that particular way uh, to make progress over there. I don't know whether that's much of an answer, but I hope that it tells you my thinking in that area. So uh, I think that uh, we've tried to take care of most of the questions. We're getting close to the end of the hour, and we should probably close at uh, the hour just so people can go back to their own work. But if there's any one last question or other, we'll just make a few comments towards the end and uh, 
then is there anything that you want to add to anything that's gone by right now we say a bit about the your involvement in the wolfram function repository what exactly your role is and i mean how things are working out over there because that's closely related to special functions and you notice that uh, there are so many special functions over there which could make it in the system so do you want to comment on that interaction between sure. wfr and mathematica sure well uh, some of these functions are going to get into the system uh, i i hope quite a number, I don't know, slowly over time. We, we um, meet on a regular basis to review the ones recently added and to determine which ones, by we, I mean the, the function repository review team. I'm the lead curator for that project. And, and we um, decide which ones we will propose uh, for incorporation into, uh, into the product itself either as new system context functions or as option uh, settings or method settings, et cetera, for existing functionality. Um, and, and so, yeah, there is, there is a path for that. Um, how much involves calculus uh, and algebra? Well, I don't know, quite a lot actually. Uh, and special functions, I'm, I'm hoping to see again, quite a, uh, some amount move forward. Uh, other than that, I think that the Wolfram function repository is is both its own thing and a, I think, important addition to uh, the uh, Wolfram language and the Mathematica system. Uh, I find myself recommending functions in answering uh, questions on uh, Mathematica Stack Exchange, for example, because it's it's a lot easier than just rewriting. <laughs> some 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 of these many of these functions found their way into the repository so that we wouldn't have to keep recoding them uh, for for answering questions that were coming up. I mean, if if a question comes up multiple times, then maybe uh, and 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 it can be answered with something that could be wrapped as a function. Then maybe it's a time to consider putting that function into the repository and so that's that's the approach we've taken um yeah. ab above and beyond that i um i just want to say thanks to everybody for um having us in your living room or desk or wherever yeah so and i think i I'd, I'd like to thank everyone because i when i we started this morning and at one final point from chase turn about yes the wolfram alpha team does submit quite a lot to functional repository and i actually meet them once every three months to make sure that we have a nice sync between a function repository, Mathematic and Wolfram Alpha to make sure that we don't have too many overlaps uh, and that we do what we are best at. And Wolfram Alpha team is best at gauging what people want. We are best at doing sometimes what we think is worth doing because that's the way things have grown in Mathematica. So, uh, but do check the function repository, do check our documentation. 13.2 um, is very close by. Uh, download when it comes, I think it's an excellent release. Uh, you will really enjoy it. So I really think uh, we are almost at the hour and uh, we should probably close with a final thank you to Dan Daniel for all his, you know, insightful answers for his, uh, you know, willingness to communicate with everyone in the, in you know, who uses Mathematica. So, and of course, to our excellent team that's in the background doing all the work. So uh, I'll close over here. It's been great having you here. Uh, have a good rest of the day and thank you very much. Thank you, Devendra.